YouTube, what is it that we are doing today? What we're doing today is a contest roundup. Um, got a lot of people putting some contests out there. I have not done a contest in a while, so I figured I'd get a bunch of them together as I was getting ready to do them. Uh, Thanatos Comics uh, put up one I just, just saw today. So got four coming at you today. I got All About Comics, my friend JP. I got Comic Spectre, I got John's Comics with Kids, my uh, teacher brother, and I got Thanatos Comics. So I'm going to try to knock them all out quick as can be. Hopefully I'll get through them all, show you guys some good comics, have some uh, interesting conversations, have some good whiskey, and uh, go on. So, All About Comics wants you to do the following. Pretty simple. Wants you to shout out five YouTubers and five Instagrammers. Uh, these are the ones that he put on the link to his video, and what he said was, you have to sub these guys up. I don't know if he's actually going to check, but uh, it's a good idea to sub these guys up anyway, because they're 10 really great people. So for Instagram, Jeffrey Comic Con, you probably know him. Um, guy's been around the community for about a year. Um, Andy's Indie Spotlight, I think it's just Indie Spotlight is the Instagram handle. Um, he was on the Comics and Cold One shows a few weeks ago. Uh, Kingdom Comics, you all should know Kingdom Comics and Sunshine Collects. They were both on Comics and Cold Ones, uh, special Comics and Cold Ones this Wednesday night. And Thomas Churchill, who does amazing videos as well. So five Instagrammers there, and then he lists five YouTubers. Uh, Don Mosser, who, if, as far as I know, for me, is relatively new, but uh, bought a package for me at auction last week, and has become an, uh, he did a video for Comic Spectre's uh, contest recently, and is just becoming a... Uh, Another person in my YouTube rotation, Boom Boom Comics, whom I have never heard of, so thank you, JP, for adding them. Uh, Poor Man's Comics, APMC, Adam Hughes, extraordinaire fan. Uh, Drew Manchu, who I'm sure you've all seen around, bearded or not. And the one and only Pope G, if you did not watch his unboxing video of the holiest of holy grails uh, from gift from four-way flashes. I mean, that's a, a thousand dollar comic that thing was amazing uh he dropped that on thursday uh, go see that on pope grimy's channel so i had to think of youtubers that i wanted to shout out um i guess the idea is to get some unknown youtubers uh or lesser known youtubers some of these are lesser known youtubers some of them aren't uh at some point i watch a youtuber enough and they go from having not a lot of subscribers to having a lot so i'm trying to do my best but here are five YouTubers that I think you should be following. Number one is Beauty Comics. I think I've said this before. He's got just, in terms of his delivery and his style and understanding what he wants his channel to be, um, he's got it down. And I, I'm sorry, I should preface by saying all five of these guys are totally different, but they all exhibit passion to me. Um, and authenticity, and that's something I'm really looking for, something I hope I'm striving for. I know sometimes I can get into realms of BS myself, and I'm really trying to stay really sincere and authentic and passionate about comics, and uh, I think these guys do that all totally differently. Um, DC Comic Queen, the C is shared between the DC and the Comic Queen. Um, she's relatively new on YouTube, been around Instagram for a while, uh, started doing videos a couple weeks ago, uh, again, just seeing her enthusiasm for comics in her videos is pretty awesome. So she's relatively new. Definitely go give her a sub up. Daz the Key Chaser, uh, he does haul videos. Um, I, I sent his son some Uncanny X-Men last year. That was really cool to see his son open those because um, he was collecting Uncanny X-Men. Daz, you probably know from uh, Dazzy's Hot Comic Book Tips, or I can't remember what, what his uh, show is called, but he does like... Uh, Hot Mama Comic Key Alerts, whenever the new movie drops, um, he puts out a little video. And I know some people aren't big on the specking or on like the, this book is going to become big, but, uh, you know, he does it with passion. Uh, news waits for no man, right, Daz? Uh, and so that passion is really important to me. Uh, Captain Mike, I learned about from Comic Colics, Wayne and Jess from their channel. Uh, Captain Mike, as far as I know, I haven't watched every video, but I've never heard him speak. Uh, Captain Mike literally just has videos where he puts words and he shows you how to clean comics, how to press comics, how to prepare comics for pressing, how to handle um, different types of comics and pressing. You can go so far as like if you've got those digital codes on the inside of comics that's going to um, 
you know, be a little bit extra thick if you were to flatten that book because there's that little sticker with the digital code on. Shows you how to deal with that. I mean, just just really beautiful, great videos um, for cleaning and pressing and handling comics. So if you're interested in any of that, I really suggest you go check out Captain Mike. And the last one is Chad Lee. Um, I, I met Chad Lee last Friday in the Comic Core channel, Friday nights. Um, and he did, I guess, his first video, and I watched his first video. And again, it's the idea of, of passion, sincerity, and authenticity. Um, I, I, he just, you know, he just talked about two things. He talked about TKO, a new company doing um, box comics where you can s read the first issue for free of all these series. They're all six issue series. You can pay like twenty five bucks to get um, a box, a really nice box of the the six issue sent to you. You could pay um, a little bit less than that for a trade paperback, or you can pay even less than that for PDF versions of all the comics. But, uh, you know, he just shouted them out, and then he shouted out a new slabbing company. And it just it was a first video, and it was really cool. It was really authentic. Um, it was passionate. It was talking him talking about the stuff he likes to talk about, and that's, you know, what I'm looking for. Um, so shout out to these five people. If you have not subbed any of them up, I suggest you sub them up. Sub them up. Uh, as far as Instagram, idiot me wrote hashtags instead of the at sign, so uh, this should all be ats. Um, Miss Marvel NYC does some video shorts uh, where she recreates uh, scenes from G. Willow Wilson's Miss Marvel comic, which are fabulous. You know how much of a Miss Marvel fan I am. Uh, the next two, Sales to Astonish and, and uh, Two's channel, T underscore Mua. Both of them are people I've bought comics off of Instagram, and so I wanted to shout them out because I think it's really important not not to call out people if somebody sends you a bad package or something, but if somebody says sends you good stuff, I think it's really important to to pump those people up. So I want everybody to know that if you see Sales to Astonish or um, to Mua on Instagram selling books, both of them will uh, have decent prices, and they ship on time, and they ship quickly uh two always sends me a, an instagram message with like a a, a screenshot a, a screenshot the cold pictures <laughs> a picture of the tracking number um so i know exactly when they're arriving and he double checks that he's got my right address sales to astonish um has big sales small sales and and i've gotten some really great books from him uh Nerd vs. Fat is interesting because as much as he's into comics, he's also chronicling um, his, his his journey uh, to better health and, and to losing weight. And uh, it takes a lot of freaking guts to do that, um, you know, putting it all out there, so to speak. Uh, and then finally, Miss Hustle. Uh, if you're not aware of Miss Hustle, she's been around for a while, but about two, three months ago, she kind of switched her role from just participating in YouTube videos and, and chats on live videos to actively promoting the comic book community and I mean this stuff takes a lot of work and a lot of time and watching the stuff that she does is absolutely amazing and um, you know shout out to Miss Hustle for that and I also want to add Discovery Bay comics I know we're supposed to have five but Discovery Bay is actually shouted out this show he says it's dropping at 3 p.m. Uh, Friday Pacific Standard Time it'll probably drop <laughs> like 12 a.m. actually um, by the time I get done with this, it's it's Thursday night now. But uh, you know, just the fact that he's finding every show that people are putting out, and he's he's promoting when they're coming out, so you can look at his page and he says, "This is what you can look forward to today." That's really cool. Um, sort of the same thing that Miss Hustle does, but um, whereas she goes and uh, kind of reposts everybody's stuff, he kind of does a, a gathering everybody's stuff. So just a different way of doing the same idea. And like I said, these should all be ads, <laughs> not hashtags. It's late. I'm trying to get all these done. So JP, I hope that gets your contest uh, done and taken care of. Let's get the libations flowing. And we'll go on to Comic Spectre. Uh, if you don't know Comic Spectre, he's got some video skills. He's got this really cool intro to his channel. Um, really cool to see little um, superhero ghost guy coming on and noise effects and stuff and uh, what Comic Spectre said to do was to showcase our five favorite books I cannot choose five favorite books I hope he meant five favorite series because that's what I'm showing um, or talking about uh, some of these are graphic novels some of these are series that have gone on forever some of these are shorter series and then my honorable mentions down below till I ran out of uh, space. So uh, we're going to start with those top five. Sculptor, Saga, Uncanny X-Men, Lock and Key, and Sandman. 
Um, if you like comics, read this. That's all I have to say. Uh, it's a graphic novel. It's beautifully drawn. It chooses this like very basic tones, the, the blues and the blacks and the whites. Um, it's about a guy who sells his soul to the devil so he can become um, a great artist and attract the woman he loves. And of course, whenever you make a bargain like that, it comes back to bite you. And that's all I'm going to say about it. It's, it's a simple idea. It is the most beautifully wrought um, representation of that idea that I have ever seen. Um, it, it's just phenomenal. Um, you know, just just phenomenal. Uh, what he goes through and the way his, uh, his life falls apart because he's made this bargain and, and what is done to him and the people around him. Um, you know, it's a classic story. It's not a new story, but the sculptor and I mean you when you get a shout out from Neil Gaiman the best graphic novel I've read in years you know you're on to something um I highly suggest you go find this at your used bookstore or, or rent and rent it from the library borrow it from the library um find it somewhere online digitally whatever just go and read it boom so uh and I also want to say with perhaps a little bit of a stretch there is a theme to my five favorite books, and that is a family. So he uh, forms a family with the girlfriend of a sort. And of course, it, it falls apart and bad things happen, but family is thematically linked there. Lock and Key, first six series. There were like six six issue miniseries within the overarching story. Um, the first one was called Welcome to Key House, and the art and the writing on this was just brilliant. Um, Joe Hill and Gabriel Walta, um, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. The idea is this family is beset by tragedy. Um, the murder of the father, who's a guidance school, high school guidance counselor, and um, Gabriel Rodriguez. I didn't mean to say Gabriel Walta, sorry. Um, and uh, the first issue chronicles basically like the death of the father and you can see the axe down here um and i've been through this before how much i love this uh and it shows the kids as they're you know they they fought to save their mom and and themselves and the mom fought to save themselves and then uh they kind of go back and forth between the funeral but there are just some some pages in here that are some of like the most awesome artwork i've ever seen and i'll show you an example of that in two seconds because I just lost the page as I saw it. This one still haunts my nightmare. Still. I just, oh, God, that's so good. Um, so they, they move up from California across the country to Dad's kind of old ancestral home. Um, and they have to kind of put their lives back together. Uh, there's three kids, Kinsey, Bode, and Locke. And they discover keys in this house that have special powers. Apparently their dad had known about the keys, but the keys only work for kids. And then that's just a beautiful, beautiful concept. And that idea is taken and that is family. Um, and that is absolutely one of my favorite books. I could have chosen five favorite issues of all time just from that series. Um, like I said, I can't choose five. There's like thousands in these boxes behind me. But choose any issue of Lock and Key and it, it would be up there. Uh, the next one. Saga. Uh, everybody's familiar with Saga, of course, um, but Saga is without a doubt one of the best ongoing. I think it is so good we forget how good it is. The artwork is astounding. The boundaries they push are phenomenal. Um, everything about what Saga is and does is, is absolutely great. Um, and it's a story, you know, it's a story of Hazel and um her struggle to grow up and find herself with interspecies parents uh i won't give away what's happened to any of them but you know this this book is a sci-fi fantasy treatise on war and um hatred and racial animosity and species animosity is a metaphor for racial animosity and you know make uh make love not war sort of thing make art not war 
but it also is a story of family. And um, I think that's what grounds it and ties it together is that it's all about family. And, and um, if you haven't gotten on the bandwagon, jump on it now. It's, it's well worth the read, uh, even in a retread. Number four, Sandman. Um, I have all the trade paperbacks. I don't have one Sandman comic. Well, I've got the later ones that he did like a few years ago in the Sandman universe where Bill Quist, Evely has done some of the artwork. I think she's a gorgeous artist. I think her artwork is gorgeous. This is starting to bow here because of the weight of the pages. So I'm, I'm like store this upside down at some point. If you don't know the story of Sandman, it is hard to explain because it is not one story. And it's 80 issues of an absolutely amazing story uh, that loosely follows Dream, one of the seven ideas, entities, gods, I'm not even sure what, what you would call them, deities. Um, and he is captured for hundreds of years and through magic and potions and held uh, held in a, a state of stasis, I guess. And then he's freed at some point and he's not necessarily out for revenge, though at first it seems like he is. He's out to kind of reclaim his place in the world, I guess is the best way to put it. And then, you know, he's got um, his brothers and sisters, and this is where I loosely tie that theme of family together. Uh, death being the most famous, but also... Um, Fate and Delirium and a few others in there. And there is, I mean, this this book is full of allegory um, and just uh, Shakespearean tragedy and romance and comedy and literary illusions. And it, it's so hard to describe because it is just that good. Um, I mean, it, it takes mythology left, right, and upside down and rewrites stories to make a point. Um trying to find something it's it's you know whereas that lock and key i could show you like uh this is a page that describes what's going on it's hard to find um a sandman page where you go this is emblematic of the whole story you know i'm actually trying to do that so this is more representative of the type of thing that you come across in the story it doesn't tell anything but you might find a page that's just like a splash like this Right, um, and it's just beautifully wrought. I mean, something like this is totally different. This is the first of four of the um, absolute collection, and I do want to get the other ones, but pricey, pricey, pricey. I think I got this when um, when did I get this? I think I got this like it was fifty, and then I got it half off for twenty five or something. Um, I got it uh, a good deal on it because they can get quite quite pricey, um, but in this size format, it just this book sings to me. Um, I'm not doing it justice by my description, and I'm aware of that. Like it's Sandman. I I I'd put it up there with Watchmen. Um, Watchmen easily could have been added to my list. I, I would put this up there with with Watchmen. Um, it's not a superhero story, so it might not quite carry the same. Uh, wait with some people, but I certainly think it is one of the best stories ever. All right, so five books for Comic Spectre, and um, <laughs> Uncanny X Men. Um, there's some debate in my head, but I am pretty sure that my love affair with Uncanny X Men started with. 149. So we're talking 30 years ago when I first read this, right? I went over this the other day in a, in a video, but it started with um, Kitty stowing away and roller skating with the X-Men into this lair because Professor X, you know, was using his mental powers to spy on somebody and found there was something that needed taken care of the way he sometimes does. Um, so I fell in love with the X-Men from that book on or from near to that point on it may not necessarily have been exactly that issue though i tend to think it was um but i mean if you bring out anything around that time uh they were just books that that i love this one where scott's going with 
Madeline Pryor, who looks like Jean Grey, and their plane crashes. Scott was wearing way too short shorts in this issue from the 80s, because, um, you know, that's how we dressed then. We didn't know any better. I don't know what the heck we were thinking. Um, another one here. Uh, Mystique is dressed, the uh, arcade is creating, like, a, a thing that Mystique's testing out to see if she can destroy all the X-Men. Um, and so you think that Wolverine's killed Kitty Pride in that cover, and Kitty Pride uh, sees her bow out and goes to um, marry Callisto the Morlocks. Um, eventually, Storm frees her from that, but uh, be, by killing uh, Callisto and no, it wasn't uh, Caliban. Sorry, Kitty marries Caliban. Storm relieves Kitty from her vow to marry Caliban by killing um, Callisto and becoming leader of the Morlocks. At the same time, Storm goes through this personal uh, transformation to Punk Rock Storm, which <laughs> as a 15, 14-year-old kid, I love Punk Rock Storm. Um, she, you know, in this issue, Kitty was giving her the cold shoulders. Kitty didn't understand why her mentor had gone from a goddess to a punk rock goddess. Um, and Storm's like, yeah, I think I'll fly you up in the clouds where you have to face me. You can't deal with me. So, I mean, this is just classic X-Men stuff. And when I talk about family, uh, the X-Men were family. They were all outcasts from different countries. Uh, Storm being from, I think, Nigeria or a made-up African nation. I can't honestly remember. Uh, Cyclops was American. Wolverine was Canadian, if that counts. Um, Nightcrawler was German and Colossus was... Um, Russian, and then Banshee, Irish. So this whole, like, international thing was the idea. And, uh, you know, just just loving, loving, loving uh, these books, loving these comics. I, I just grew up with them. Uh, both, like, the stories as they stand alone and just kind of the overarching meaning of what it meant to be a mutant kind of an outcast. I think that... I don't know about all of us, but a lot of us maybe were outcasts if we read comics in school. I don't know if it's cool to do that right now, but uh, I'm sorry, I'm just looking for issues, making sure they're in order. Um, but uh, I, you know, I identified with them, and I love them, and they became one of my favorites. So I think we've got issue 199. And this box goes up to 279. That was the last Claremont issue. Um, I have from like 145 to 279. Uh, I don't have from Giant Size X Men <laughs> to uh, to 140. I've got about half the books in there. 99 is the earliest I have. Um, so that is definitely a goal of mine is to finish that off sometime. Um, sorry, I don't know. I hope that was information. I felt like I was looking <laughs> through my childhood and not, not sharing enough stuff with you, but there's just so much X-Men there. I wouldn't know what to do or, or how to do. And I realized this video is getting long. Um, so we're going to move it along here. Uh, so Thanatos, uh, Wanted us to do two things. Wanted us to shout out two YouTubers. And since I already shouted out five for um, All About Comics, I'm going to uh, just shout out two more who are not like small YouTubers with small amounts, but hopefully the two plus the five will be enough to get me into the comics. But just want to shout out Pope Grimey and All About Comics. Um, we do comics and cold ones. If you're not familiar with them, they do a phenomenal show. They're, they're great to watch. They're two different individuals who become really good friends. And, uh, you know, the stuff and the content they put out, I think, is really, really good. And it keeps me going. Um, the other thing that Thanatos wanted me to do was to go back to our first video and to kind of talk a little bit about what was in your first video and, and why you started making videos and what it was like. And I honestly can't remember why I made videos. I know why I've continued to make them. My first one was about... 14 months ago, maybe 15 months ago, is right after Jet City Comics Show. Um, and I guess I'd been watching some videos and started to become aware that there were like YouTube videos out there. And so right after the Jet City Comics Show, I had a nice haul of signed books and um, 
Jet City is a nickname of Tacoma, by the way. I had some signed books and I had some uh, new books and I just wanted to show them off. And I remember, man, I, I put my little book stand up there. I had the iPad on a, a tripod facing there and I filmed it. And I was so meticulous about getting it right. If I made a mistake, I'd stop the film and delete it and redo it. And, you know, it didn't occur to me until maybe making three or four videos in that I could A, go live and just show stuff. Or B, if I was going to record and edit, I didn't have to make it perfect. I could make mistakes and it was okay. So some of the books that I showed in that, um, something like this that I, I took to um, Comic-Con, I'd already gotten it signed by Greg Rucka and Liam Sharp at Rose City Comic-Con. But then I got it signed by um, Michael Clark and... I think it was Jeremy Cowell, who is probably the letter. I can't remember. So I've got like, out of all these people, um, Clark and Sharp are the artists, Ruck is the writer, and then Cowell. I've got four out of the six uh, creators that are listed here on that um, rebirth. I think that was, was that the one shot? I can't remember. And then, you know, I picked up some books like this, uh, The Wonder Woman, Tasmanian Devil, which I really wanted and really regretted once I read it and realized it wasn't very good. Um, and then, you know, I picked up some X-Men there, too, which is pretty cool. Uh, you know, so even back then, I was talking about completing my X-Men run. Uh, 145, 147, 210. So, you know, there was uh, some good amount of books there that I got. I mean, I got, like, a stack like that, but I just didn't want to show them all to you. If you're really interested, go to my channel and go back to my original one. So, Thanatos, I hope that... Uh, meets the requirements of yours and then last one i want to do here is john's comics with kids if you're not familiar with john every saturday morning at 8 a.m he shares some comics that his kids and him have been reading and they each girl gets to talk about the comics and he talks about his comics uh and that's kind of how it started but john has blown up big he's all over the place with videos everywhere live with other people and just 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 everywhere it's really really cool what he's doing so John's Comics with Kids, everybody, is without a doubt um, a channel to sub up and a guy to, to watch. Uh, he wanted us, since he's got kids, he wanted us to show our favorite kids' stories um, and tag him on Instagram. So I already did that and put a link into his video. So for all these contests, once you make a video, you've got to take the link to your video and put it in the comments of the original com contest video. I hope that made sense. So... Um, I chose Lumberjanes and Mechadet U. Um, I spelled an ice cube. Lumberjanes is a weird book for me because it is about preteen and teen girls at a summer camp. So not something that I automatically have something in common with. But uh, in 1993, I got a job as a backpacking and canoeing guide at a scout camp in the Adirondacks. And I worked there from 93 to 2000 sometimes full-time, sometimes as a director, sometimes as a freelancer, always doing the rock climbing, the backpacking, the canoeing. Um, and I met some really good friends there, and it became a big part of my life, like going away even after I graduated college. Um, you know, I even when I was a teacher, I, I went back there in the summer and just had great friends. I mean, you know, inappropriate drinking, goofing off on the weekend sort of thing, but but still just, just great times. Um, so I think that is part of what draws me to Lumberjanes. Um, it's, but it's these five girls. Uh, one of them starts out, she's kind of a perfectionist. That's April. Um, you know, she wears the bow in the hair and, uh, and has always got a plan for something and always has a backup plan for something. Um, there's Mal who's sort of butch and tough and, and her, her girlfriend, um, Molly, who's very, very shy and unsure of herself. Ripley, who's my absolute favorite, she has skinned, I mean, I'm looking at the cover right now. She has skinned knees and um, is always dirty uh, and always going crazy. And then Joe, who is trans and is kind of like the leader and the, the science whiz of the group. And the five of them together just have ridiculous uh, adventures, which I find quite amusing. So here is issue one, signed by... Um, Oh, I met them. So Aubrey Aisi does the lettering. Um, Marta Leho, Leho does the coloring. And I think this is Noelle Stevenson's signature. 
I can't quite remember, uh, to be honest with you. Or it's Shannon Waters. I don't think Shannon was there. I think that's Noelle Stevenson's. I've got to double check. But uh, there's issue one. Uh, there is sec there is a, not second printing, that is uh, variant issue one, where I also have a couple of signatures on there. Um, there is the second printing to issue one. There is another variant to issue one. Uh, I don't think they were calling them virgin variants in 2015. That's a relatively new term, but it certainly is. There's a virgin variant to issue three. Um, these go for like a lot on eBay, but Aubrey Ayesi, who does the lettering, had, was selling these at Emerald City like $2 each. I kept buying some from her every year after year just because I could. Um, they did a six-issue run of Lumberjanes and Gotham Academy, which wasn't very good. They could have taken the story and squeezed it into four issues, and I think it would have been a lot better. Uh, but this is a variant cover to number one, drawn by Layla Del Duca, who I always call Layla De Luca by accident. She did the art on um, Shudder, which is a really great book. I always thought that was an awesome cover. This is... Like I said, Aubrey AC, I kept buying stuff from her. She had this convention, get a sketch, and I asked her to sketch Ripley for me. Um, and I came back the next day in the morning, and she hadn't done it. I, I think she might have thought I wasn't going to come back and pay. So I came back that morning, I'm like, what time can I pick it up? She's like, oh, I'll, I'll have it for you. So uh, really cheap, like $35. It's a simple pencil sketch, but that is Ripley. Um, and, and I love this. I absolutely love that, that the, the bug, the missing tooth, the smile, the, that that's just Ripley. And that's awesome. Um, Lumberjanes has hit a niche and has not stopped. Uh, issue 50 came out with a, uh, connecting covers. Um, so these are not the connecting covers. This one, I think if I took it out is a wraparound cover. The connecting cover just has the black writing. So. Um, there is a, oh, there you go. There's a, these are the two connecting covers and this is the wraparound cover that looks like the two connecting covers. Um, so Lumberjanes, they, they just, there is no like overarching story. There's friendship, um, there's acceptance and there is just Greek goddesses, mermaids, Sasquatches, um, roller derby badges, uh, ancient yetis, um, it's just fun. It's just fun. All right. Hopefully I can keep this energy up. I don't, I feel like I've been sagging. It's late at night. Um, my wife went to bed early. She had a tough day at school. Um, I took the day off, took my kids to the doctor. So it's just been all sorts of craziness. Um, just wanted to show up that, that Mecca Cadet U. Uh, really great book. Great book. Uh, Greg Pak. Takeshi Miyazawa, who does a lot of the art on the early Miss Marvel. Triona Farrell does the lettering. Um, I don't know what else to say. It's it's really wonderful. It's a simple story. And I don't mean that as negative, right? Boy wants to imagine himself as a hero, as something greater than he is. He's at a low station in life. His mom cleans the base, the military base. There are these mechs that come down every 10 years and choose a great soldier, a young soldier to, um, to be like their protector. And the young soldier gets to control the mech and they fight against the bugs who come and attack every like generation or something. But then one of the mechs chooses you, our little hero. And of course there are people who are angry that he was chosen. There are people higher up in the pol you know, politicians who want to, and, military leaders who want to stop that but then he saves the day and then a group of the kids who originally were antagonistic towards each other now form a group of friends um and they're going to take on the scargs no matter what and uh they're going to defy authority it, it, you've seen this story a thousand times it's not a new story and I, I see this a lot on my channel you don't have to have a brand new story to tell a really good story right um you can tell a similar concept uh and just make it your own and and that's what they do here and so john if if your girls have not read mech cadet you i i highly suggest you uh pick up the trades the two trades cover everything they might go on they might not they kind of ended um on a high note there's certainly room for more development but i think they ended um their show
All right. Um, that's been a lot. And I, I hope that this wasn't boring and it wasn't just me talking. This was uh, Sandman and X-Men and Lock and Key and Saga and Mech Cadet and Lumberjanes and Comic Spectre and John's Comics with Kids and Thanatos Comics and all about comics and comics and comics and comics and comics. Uh, and, you know, this community is, is just great. It's great that people want to celebrate that other people are watching them, want to give away stuff as a way to say thank you to other people watching them. I, mean, I, I think we are all a little bit egotistical, right? I'm not dying for subs. I'm not like putting out tons of content, but I do like when I find out that somebody watched a video I made. That makes me happy, especially if they like it or watch it or say, hey, I saw that video, really great information, or hey, you got that information wrong about the writer on that book, and then I don't mind, you know, something like that. Um, so I think we all kind of feel good, so we want to give back. Um, I'm coming up on 300, so I guess it's my turn uh, to hit a contest soon. I, I will definitely be doing that. Um, I should end this. I could go on talking forever, but I don't want to. So I will end it now. Uh, say goodbye. Say thank you very much. And uh, you know, encourage you guys, if you haven't done so already, to join one of these contests. Thank you.